Well, it's Bible Sunday, and our scripture is from Matthew 13, verses 1 through 9, and it is the parable of the sower and the soils. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, it is harvest season, and I know our farmers are chafing at the bit for the soil to get dry so they can get out there and do all the harvesting, but it's also Bible Sunday, and I think this parable of Jesus has something special to say to us. Well, I'm not a farmer. Uh, I did grow up in the country, though. And I grew up, I don't know, back in the day where we had chores to do. Anybody else had chores? I don't even, that's like a four-letter word today, chores. And uh, for sure, on Saturday, there was a list of chores that we had to do before we could go and have any fun. And my least favorite chore of every chore you could possibly imagine, including shoveling coal, well, that's in the day, right? Right was weeding the garden. Oh, man, I hated weeding the garden. And because, for one thing, my father had the biggest family garden you could ever imagine. I mean, we couldn't eat all this stuff, but he gave it away. But who worked in the garden? We worked in the garden, not my father. So, And, I mean, it was, it's big. I mean, I haven't seen none of your, any of your gardens are that big. But anyway, so we also, of course, had to, to plant it. And I must say, I'm sorry, parents, my least favorite vegetable at the time was green beans. I'm okay. I made my peace with green beans now. But anyway, so one day my chore was I had to plant all these packages. I don't know. There was a sale at Walmart or what it was, but my father got all these packages of green beans and I had to plant all these rows of green beans. And my father was very strict the way, you know, how they should be planted so far apart how many seeds in each little space. And so, I mean, it was, the sun was hot. I was just dying out there. At least I thought so. And I planted these rows and they went forever and forever. And so finally, uh, my father's instruction was to plant all the seeds. And so I had a few packages of seeds left and I thought, I'll plant these, but not in the rows. So I tore open the packages and I just put them in my hand and I threw them over away from the garden. And I thought, done, I went inside. And my father said, did you plant all the seeds? I said, yes, I did, which technically was correct. So, (laughs) and I thought, I'm off, I can go play, right? And so a few weeks went by, and my father was there at the breakfast table. He was an early riser, and he said, "Uh, you know those beans that you planted? I said, yeah. He said, you planted them all? I said, I sure did. He said, you know, it's a funny thing, but... I was out in the garden this morning, and at the end of one of the rows, you'll never believe this, about 10 feet in, there's all these beans growing there. Do you know what could have happened? <laughs> I, mean, like, I have no idea. The wind? The birds, maybe? <laughs> My father knew what had happened, so a little bit of judgment they, there for me. But it, it's funny because those green beans honestly didn't grow very long. They grew just long enough to wrap me out in what I had done because there were some weeds and thorns in there, and that choked out those beans, but not before they told the truth on me. Well, anyway, so it's interesting because I think that casts a little bit of light on this parable of Jesus this morning, which is a beautiful parable. Now, it's interesting in this parable because Jesus, in this setting where he tells this parable, is out with this crowd of people. In fact, he's out teaching from the boat. I think we ought to try that some Sunday morning. What do you think? We'll do, I'll get out in the boat and we'll all be on the side there, but have a big picnic afterwards. But Jesus, actually the acoustics on the water are excellent. So uh, Jesus is teaching from the boat 
And then later, Jesus repairs to some folks' house for dinner, and the disciples are there, and some other closer disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus, and they begin to ask him about uh, the meaning of this. And so it's interesting. So uh, Jesus begins to explain the parable, and the parable, of course, is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And Jesus often told stories that people would understand. Of course, it's very agricultural society of that day, but the disciples were wondering, what's the meaning of the parable? And so Jesus begins to tell them the meaning of the parable. And I want you to watch for the moment, because sometimes we say this is the parable of the sower and the seed. Have you heard that? It's, it's, it is, but it's not, really, okay? Is the parable really about the seed? Sort of about the seed. Actually, the parable is about the soil. Every farmer knows that you need good soil. And so Jesus begins to explain this, and he says uh, in verse 18, he says this, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path, okay? So the soil is actually what? The soil is a metaphor for our heart. What is our heart like? And what is the seed? The seed is God's word, God's promises in our heart and life. And so the first soil if you will, is what? I'd like to say that it's hard-hearted people. It falls on the stony path, all right? And so you have to remember that back in the day when they did this, they didn't have the combines with GPS and all this sort of thing. What they would do is take a basket of seed, and they'd walk along the path, and they would do what's called broadcast sowing, okay? Uh, broadcast seeding. And so they would just throw the seed back and forth, and then after the you know, ground was the best as it could be. And so some of that seed would fall along the stony path, which is rock-hard soil, and Jesus says it's just taken away by, by the birds. Uh, even the evil one is used. And so this morning, I want to ask you, are you or maybe some of your family a hard-hearted person? Same seed, different soil. This isn't even soil. It's hard. And sometimes I think our lives are hardened by the things that have happened to us, very legitimate stuff. And maybe, you know, we've been uh, jilted or we've been through some tragedy. Maybe we just feel like everybody's sort of trodden on us and our heart becomes hardened. It can be a natural response. But Jesus says that seed is just sort of blown away. And then there's the next kind of soil. And this is the rocky ground. And I'd like to say that it's faint-hearted people. Listen to what he says. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy, but since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. You see, the, the ground is shallow and the seed can't get any roots, and so it withers. Have you ever been on a, a race and seen somebody sort of wilt under the sun. I'll get more personal. <laughs> Anybody besides me got the COVID-15 sort of working? You know what that is? The 15 pounds from COVID. You didn't go to the gym quite the same. You didn't exercise quite the same. You said you would. You even did a New Year's and said you would. And it's not quite the same. Well, the other month I did in September... I did the Air Force Marathon. I didn't do the marathon, okay? I did the 10K. I knew I couldn't do the marathon, but, and it was virtual, so you could do it virtually. You could even, like, get off the treadmill, <laughs> get water, because you're still moving. Get back on the treadmill. It's really tricky getting back on them when they're, when they're moving. So, anyway, and, uh, and I was working. I do the treadmill almost every morning. In fact, I get up early in the morning, and I listen to devotion, do stuff, but honestly, I haven't been doing 10K, and so <laughs> I tried the 10K. I did it but it was not easy. I was one of those fainting people, right? And so Jesus is saying that that's kind of like our lives. There are the faint-hearted people, and you hear the word, you have the seed planted, the plant begins to grow, but then the roots aren't deep enough, and what happens? We become faint-hearted. I mean, you stand for what you think is right in the world, but the moment the culture comes against you and disagrees, you sort of, you know, you just faint. You just wilt, right? And so this morning, what kind of soil are you? Are you the soil that allows deep roots? Or are you the shallow soil that when persecution, tribulation, and trials come, 
You just sort of wilt in the, in the sun. And then there's the next soil, which I'd like to say is the half-hearted soil, and that's the thorny soil. And listen what Jesus says. He says, the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. It's kind of like the bean plants I threw out there. They grew for a while, and then the weeds and the thorns begin to choke it out. And Jesus says, these might be well-intentioned people, but they're sort of half-hearted. In other words, there's some things choking out the life of the plant, some distractions. Maybe they're legitimate in some ways, worries, anxieties, cares of the day. We all have them, goodness knows, especially right now. But the Word doesn't have the priority. And so this morning, think about your own life. Where are you on the soils? Are you the hard-hearted, stony path person? Are you the faint-hearted person with a thin veneer of soil where the roots can't grow and the storms and persecution and difficulties of life push that out? Or maybe you are the faint-hearted person that the soil looks good, but then the thorns begin to grow and choke out the life of the plant. And then Jesus says this. Jesus says there's the whole-hearted good soil folks. Don't the farmers love this? But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. And this is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 and 30 times what was sown. The wholehearted, the good soil. Now, you notice the seed was exactly the same. And God's word is the same to all of us. What was different was the soil in our lives. What was different was the hearts in each and every person. Now, you might see yourself in some of those. Maybe we've all had some seasons in life like this, but here's the good news. You're not predestined to say the same soil all of your life. If you are the stony path or you're the rocky soil, that rocky soil can get broken up. Sometimes God does that for us. <laughs> Sometimes we have some moments where we're sort of broken and uh, in humbleness, we begin to become more fertile, and then that soil can take root. Sometimes we might be the person that's in the thorny soil, and what we need to do is clear out some of the distractions of life. What thorns do you need to clear out of your life today so that God's Word can grow in your life? And when you do that, there's a life-changing, dramatic moment that takes place, and all of a sudden, You'll find that you like being a good plant that bears fruit. You'll find that you're healthy and fruitful, and you're like a person that's exercising well, and life is full, and God's promises are real, which doesn't mean, by the way, that no challenge or adversity will ever fall in the way of your life. We're all destined to that, but you will endure it in a different way than the soil that has just a thin veneer of soil or, or the seed growing in thorny soil where life is choked out. Now, I think there's at least two ways we can look at it. One is, what soil are we, right? Are we the stony path? Are we the rocky ground? Are we the thorny soil? Are we the, the good soil? Are we the hard-hearted? Are we the faint-hearted? Are we the half-hearted? Are we the whole-hearted? And then also, when we share God's Word, I mean, sometimes we get all wrapped up with how people receive that. But Jesus is also telling us we need to sow too, just like he is, right? And it's up to the people and God what happens to that seed. We're cheering good things happening. But sometimes it takes a while for the seed to take root. And sometimes it even takes a while for the soil to change. Uh, there's a great story of the great writer, the great Russian writer Dostoevsky. And he was in this revolutionary group. He's actually opposing the um, uh, change of government, the Bolshevik Revolution and uh, he was uh, sentenced to death. He was put in front of a firing squad, was blindfolded, and the last moment there was a reprieve, and they were all sentenced to hard time in Siberia. And as they were walking into prison, there was a group of ladies there. They were handing out the Gospel of John, little Gospel of John, and he took one. He was a complete atheist, and he read that in prison, and his life was forever changed. He eventually got out of prison, wrote some of the greatest classics in world literature, 
of all time. A powerful, powerful Christian on the world stage. Now, some of us, maybe you've known some people in your own life whose lives were dramatically changed. For me, I'll close with this story. Uh, I was in high school. It's not easy to be a Christian in high school. It wasn't then. is isn't today. I know that. It's difficult. And uh, so I remember in electronics class, I had this lab partner by the name of Pat. And Pat was, he was a great guy. He was a smart guy. He was a good lab partner. But um, uh, Pat had a little um, um, side hustle, <laughs> a little side business in high school. He had this Volkswagen Beetle, and he would load it up with high-quality American switchblades and then drive it to Mexico in the summertime. And, uh, you know, he had all these hot uh, knives hidden away. And then he would exchange them for marijuana, <laughs> for weed. And he would drive that north. He was apparently good, great at Spanish. He was one of the top Spanish students. And uh, then he would, of course, sell that around school. And he, he tried his own stuff. So he always reeked. He wore this army trench coat that just always smelled like he'd burning leaves or something. You know what I'm saying? So uh, anyway, <laughs> I had to hardly breathe. And Pat, I invited Pat to church. And uh, Pat first said no, and then he said, well, okay. You know, I think maybe you just wanted to scare the church folks. So anyway, but so Pat walked in, and you would have thought we were burning leaves at the church. So, but people kind of turned around, and Pat sat down, and, and so we'd do that. And, and he would go to our Sunday school class, which he liked. A farmer, Junior Scott, was the greatest guy with high school students. And so, uh, and we all kind of opened the windows because it was that bad. And so, uh, and then I would pick up Pat with my car because Pat had a car. It apparently could go all the way to Mexico, but Pat couldn't get up Sunday morning to make it to church. You know, people like that. So, I got up and I drove out and got Pat, had to wait for him to get ready, a little bit late for church. And that went on forever without a lot of change in Pat's life, other than Pat would sometimes ask some really good questions. And so I went on to college and Pat went on to college and two years went by. And I got a phone call when I was home for spring break one time and it was Pat. And he said, hey, you want to meet and, at McDonald's? And I said, sure, why not? Why not? So I go to McDonald's, I'm waiting in line there, and all of a sudden Pat comes up, we're waiting, and start waiting together, hey, how you doing, all that stuff. And then Pat turns to me, just square in the face and said, um, I get saved, I'm a, I'm a Christ follower. And I thought for a moment he was mocking me, <laughs> you know, because I thought all those moments. And so I said, sure, right. And he said, no, really. He said, my life has changed and I'm completely different. And I said, well, what happened? And so he began to say, well, you know, all that time we were in Sunday school, all the time we talked, and all the time we picked up. He said, well, not much happened, but then our friend, we had a mutual friend who got cancer, and he gave his life to Christ in the hospital, and it was a really dramatic moment. And like all the nurses, all of a sudden, this guy was just like that light that turned on. And so Pat went to visit him in the hospital, and he shared the word in a way. He said, listen, I'm, I'm going to be with Christ, but I want to share this with you. And that, in that moment, God took all that seed that had been sown, and all of a sudden it grew. And Pat was so changed that he began to go to church regularly, and then he began to teach Sunday school, and then he decided he was going to be a missionary and down to, um, it was a Spanish-speaking country. He was actually excellent at speaking Spanish. <laughs> God uses those wayward chapters in our life later on. And he did dramatic things for the Lord, and it was amazing. So sometimes when you share something, you think, well, that's, that's just falling on the stony path, but, or that's just happening in the rocky soil or thorny ground. But the truth be told, God can change the soil, and all of a sudden, what was barren, what was dry, what couldn't harvest a thing is all of a sudden fruitful and changed and amazing what God can do. So for you and I this morning, I ask you, what kind of soil are you? The word is the same. The soil is what's different. And if you're sharing God's word with someone, it's not up to you how they receive it. Our job is to share it. God still does amazing things with his word. We join me in prayer. Lord, as we think about Bible Sunday and your amazing word that still works today as great as it did thousands of years ago, Help us to be receptive and open to your word and help us to share your word because in your word there is life and life-changing power through your power and to your glory. And all God's people said, amen.